We left Marshall Rock a little earlier than we would have liked, but weather reports were talking about high winds and thunderstorms, and we really didn't want to spend time in tanting gear with some nasty weather just around the corner. It wasn't a long drive to Mark and Buden, where we had booked in for two nights in a tiny cabin at the caravan park. At just $55 a night for two people, the railway barracks didn't sound as though it was going to be that great, but we were very pleasantly surprised. You'll have to wait until a little bit later in this episode, though, to have a look at what you get for $55. My apologies in advance for the lousy interior shots, but they were taken on my phone, because I thought I might forget to record them with my proper camera gear. And, uh, yeah, you guessed right, I did. We settled in at the caravan park and visited the local IGA to stock up on some supplies that were running low. Once we had done that, it was time to get out and film some locations before the bad weather arrived the next day. Yeah, where are we packing? Our first destination for the day was Mango Wine. Now, the name Mango Wine conjures up really nice images of sweet-tasting alcoholic beverages, but uh, unfortunately, the place has absolutely nothing to do with either wine or mangoes. Mango Wine is in fact a homestead and a wayside inn that dates back to 1876. It's now administered by the National Trust, and the caretaker, Bob, looks after the property that's been turned into a museum. Apart from the homestead being a very interesting look back at our pioneering past, there's also a campsite where people can stay. Power is available, as are toilets and showers, and tours of the inside of the buildings are conducted by Bob for a small fee. From time to time, special events are held at Mangawine, but you'll need to check out their website to find out more. I'll put a link to the Mangawine site in the description below. So the second place we're visiting today is called Billicatting Hill. It's only a day use area, so not a campsite, but it has toilets, seats and tables, and uh, hopefully some interesting wildflowers and birds. You can definitely hear the bird song. And you can see a few wildflowers here and some weeds, I think, near the car park. And we'll just have a quick look around here and uh, see what we can find. The hill is just up in front of me here. Some interesting looking rock formations up there. Yeah, so today we've just come down from Muck and Buden. Mango Wine is in about here, around the corner to Billy Catting. Uh, may go out and have a look at uh, Eaglestone, that's a campsite. So this whole area is really worth exploring if you're up this way. Uh, most of the really interesting stuff is in that particular region there. So, uh, lots to see there. Never been down to Frog Rock. The theory on this trip is that we will be going out as far as Southern Cross. Well, I don't think we're going to get any further east than that. So, hopefully, we'll get out to Balaji. We'll have a quick look at Bullfinch. I know there's another campsite up here somewhere that we may check out. Depends how far it is. Then we'll come down. We'll have a look at Frog Rock. Uh, back to Maureen. And Maureen Rock's in here somewhere, I think. Uh, up to have a look at Westonia, always worthwhile dropping in and having a look at that really pretty little town. And then probably a night or two in Meriden, because there's plenty to see and do there. Uh, probably would be nice to stay in a cabin there if we can. And from there it's, we're sort of making our way home at that stage. So uh, we'll see how the rest of the trip goes, hopefully, um, relatively smoothly. <laughs> Yeah, quite a few nice wildflowers out around the hill. Reasonable variety here. Very pleasant little spot.
From Billicatting Hill, we drove further west to Yarragin Rock. It was getting a bit late in the day, and there was still a bit of a drive to get back to Mach and Buden. So all we did was drive in to get some footage, had a quick look at the rock and the parking area, and then continued on our way. Overnight, the storm came in as predicted, and by morning, there was high wind and rain. The forecast was pretty accurate, but isn't it always when they say the weather's going to be bad? We still had to get out and film a few places, so the weather wasn't going to slow us down very much. Undaunted, we headed off southeast to Eaglestone Rock and Lake Brown. Sadly, the high winds prevented filming with the drone, but at least there were some breaks in the weather, and we managed to find a nice sheltered spot up by the rock to enjoy lunch. I'm pretty sure that the last time we visited Eaglestone, there was a long drop Danny available, but this time there was no sign of it, so I'm either not remembering it correctly or it was removed. The campsite is on the far side of the rock from the entry point and you have to follow the track quite a long way round. The main track in is in good shape usually and is suitable for most vehicles. I'd probably be a little bit hesitant to take something like a 40 foot tag axle bus in there though. Well, Lake Brown was probably uh, named for a person, but it's living up to the colour brown at the moment. Not much water in there at all. I expected to see more than that. Uh, we're trying to get out of the wind at the moment. We have, we've just come up uh, a little side road away from the campsite, which is just down in front of us. You'll have seen from the other vision we took in the car. Uh, there's quite a big campsite. We just found this lovely little sheltered spot perfect for when the wind's blowing like it is today so we're just going to settle down and have some lunch this is Eaglestone Rock and Lake Brown very pretty area even more pretty this time of year with the wildflowers out although uh, lots of weeds as well so quite a nice view from up here a bit of a shame the lake hasn't got any more water in it now, is there a toilet? That's the question. No wonder they say it's pretty. There, the toilet. Ah, yeah, there. there's a toilet. Good. Ooh, it's, no wonder they say it's pretty. Hmm, too pretty. We're now at Talga Mine, and uh, this is yet another campsite in the area. Nice little spot, a reasonable amount of room for people to park up, I guess. I haven't seen where that track goes yet. The rock is just up in front of me. I'll go and have a look at that little sign in a minute. Table, seats, bin of a sort, and uh, a drop toilet very pretty at the moment, lots and lots of flowers out 
That was the report we heard from Bob up at uh, Mangawai Homestead. He was saying that uh, all the tourists were saying this was a very pretty spot as far as wildflowers are concerned. But finding that there's not a great variety of wildflowers around but you do get these nice little patches of yellow and pink and white all over the place. So let's have a little look at the toilet. See what sort of condition it's in. Yeah, pretty standard old drop toilet I guess. Uh, no toilet paper. Probably not going to be all that clean. Yeah. Not exactly picturesque is it? <laughs> Nothing to clean the toilet with so I don't know who maintains this, but they're not doing as good a job as some of the toilets around. But still, it's better to have a toilet available, I guess, than not. Okay, I'm just going to wander over and have a look at the sign, see if there's anything interesting on that. Quite a picturesque view there, through the campsite up to the hill. Looks like the rain is coming in again very, very shortly, so uh, I have to make this quick. With our touring and filming in the bush pretty much over for the day, it was time to head back into town and check out the art gallery that's been set up in the local town hall. It turned out to be very nice and some of the artwork was very good indeed. The gallery showcases artists from all over the place, but it was good to see some exceptional pieces from local artists as well. The art is mostly available for sale and there are other items available as well, including wood carvings, clothes, and even some chocolate. No prizes for guessing what we bought. Apart from a quick visit to the local bookshop, where I managed to find yet another great haul of local history books, that was all we managed to get done for the day. The forecast did say that the storm would be over by the following morning, so we settled down in the caravan park unit and just relaxed. Well, chalk and cheese between yesterday and today. As you can see, beautiful blue sky now. This is the Munkinbooden Caravan Park. It's one of the best Shire-run caravan parks we've ever been to. Great facilities here. Uh, these little units that we stayed in. Um, Air-conditioned, fridge, fan, TV, $55 a night. You really can't get much cheaper than that these days, I don't think. So just in case I forget to film the room with the proper camera, I'm doing this with the uh, little mobile phone. So forgive the rotten audio and uh, the not so great footage, but uh, worthwhile just giving people a look at the good little rooms here. Yeah, twin beds, nice big window, got a fan and a light at the top there, little fridge, little bar fridge, work area, enough to put the computer on, enough power points to be useful, and uh, TV and reverse cycle air conditioner, so not bad at all, and for 55 bucks a night you really hard pressed to find anything better than this anywhere so quite pleased with it it's not huge but uh, certainly does what we need and uh, yeah we highly recommend this caravan park we've been here before and uh, it's really great value for money and they they go the extra mile to provide really good facilities for people they've got other bigger units here that range up in price from there but uh, in general this place has got some amazing facilities. I'm just going to take you over to the camp kitchen and the barbecue area and uh, show you what that's like. Barbecue area here, outdoor seating, main barbecue and they've got some uh, other barbecues I suppose if there's more people cooking. Uh, just behind that is the camp kitchen and this is one of the best constructed and equipped camp kitchens we've seen. Yep, wheelchair access from over there. 
that door area. And inside, beautiful stainless steel tops. There we have microwave. They've got all the dishes, cutlery, cooking utensils stacked in boxes under here, cups as well. A toaster, kettle, good sink, nice hot water, big TV out there for those who can't do without those sorts of things. Uh, more cooking gear down there, pots and pans, uh, an excellent cooker, bin and a decent sized fridge for those who need to keep something cold. And a little book swap area down there, not much in it, but uh, and on the wall over here. Uh, just back away from that. An old uh, bit of shearing history and some pictures underneath there. So, uh, yeah, very, very nice facilities here. And even a uh, little comfortable lounge to uh, sit in if you want to sit and watch TV. So you really can't find a much better camp kitchen than that in any caravan park regardless of whether it's private or uh, shire owned. And uh, being a shire park they've done an excellent job here. Really can't fault this place at all. And just over there is the ablution block. Unlike uh, many caravan parks where the facilities are all in one, these are all little individual ensuite units, so you have privacy when you're showering or going to the toilet. So it's not all uh, in one area. Every shower and toilet facility is separate and uh, very nice and clean.